with that, John, would you like to introduce your um, entertainment? Uh, this is John Francis. He's one of our judges. I'm one of his biggest fans, and he's going to take it from here. Oh, it, it, oh, that makes it even better. Fantastic. Ready? Yes. Soldier show. Thank you very much. It's so great to be back at Weezer. Uh, I first came here as a 12-year-old, sort of drugged by my parents in 1967. I played a little bit of fiddle music, but I was pretty horrible. And I didn't enter the contest that year. I just came and I was um, transformed, I guess that's a good word to say. Um, that first tune I just played was, I thought, a good place to start. Um, it was the first song I ever played in any fiddle contest. It's called Soldier's Joy. When I got here to Weezer in 1967, um, I was a reluctant fiddle player, but uh, I heard for the first time amazing fiddlers like Cyril Stinnett from Fillmore, Missouri, and Lloyd Wanzer from Caldwell, Idaho, and Bill Long from Montana, and Cleo Persinger, and uh, Dwayne Youngblood, and just so many more that my little 12-year-old brain was blown. And it did something to me that changed my life. Um, I now have been to Weezer over 50 times. This is my 56th year since I first came. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, as a result, my life is so much fuller and happier because of the friends, because of the music, and because of all the things I learned from so many great fiddlers over the years. So tonight, I'm gonna spend a few minutes just kind of paying tribute to a few of those fiddlers that I met in those first early years when I was starting to play. And I'd start, like to start first with um, the guy who won the fiddle contest in 1966, the year before I came. Um, uh, his name was Cyril Stinnett from Fillmore, Missouri, my father's home state. And uh, Cyril Stinnett was a bib overall wearing farmer um, that was a great fiddle player. And he was here in 67, defending his title. There were a couple turns he played that just took my fancy. This is one of them that he played in the contest that year called Rosebud Reel. <laughs> Thank you. 
The person who won Weezer in 1967 was a beautiful fiddler, Lloyd Wanzer from Caldwell, Idaho. And the really interesting thing about 66 and 67 is both of those fiddlers were left-handed fiddlers. They bowed with their left arm and fingered with their right, so just the opposite of most of the fiddlers you see. Um, interestingly, there were two back-to-back. -back. It was kind of an unusual thing. Lloyd Wanzer was famous for his waltzes, and he was the first fiddler that I knew of to record an all-waltz fiddle album. And this is a song I learned from Lloyd Wanzer's Waltz Wonderland. Perfect 1960s name for an album. This is called The Ranger's Waltz. So in 1967, after I left Weezer, I went home and started playing because I was excited by all this fiddle music and this was like amazing. I started attending a couple of fiddle contests. I played my first Soldier's Joy in a fiddle contest and I got a little bit better and I came back in 1968 to enter for the first time. And in 1968, there was another transformational fiddler that was here by the name of Herman Johnson from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Herman Johnson's got a really unique record here at Weezer because he came five times over a 10-year period and he won every single time. He's the only fiddler that has never played at Weezer over multiple years and never been beaten. So kind of a cool fiddle player. He was beautiful in his stylings, he was clean, and he was like the first kind of Texas-style fiddler I'd ever heard because not too many of them had come to Weezer prior to 1968 and Herman Johnson. So I learned so many tunes from Herman Johnson. This is a tune that became a kind of a contest staple of mine that I heard him play many times. This won't sound exactly like Herman Johnson, it's just my version of Dusty Miller.
you beat Herman that year? <laughs> no, I didn't beat Herman that year. I got somewhere in the junior division, just like you know you're supposed to when you first come. So, um, 68 and 69, Herman Johnson was here. 1970, I was a 15 year old, and um, it was the first year I won the junior division. And Byron Berline, who maybe is one of the best known fiddlers that has ever lived, um, was here in 1970 to win his second national championship. He was about 10 years older than me, and I looked up to him in so many ways. He was exciting and just an amazing fiddle player. Um, there's a tune I learned from him that I played in a bunch of contests since then. Uh, Darren doesn't love it, but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Look at we all have our favorites for sure. Uh, this is a tune called Brilliancy. And, and then you can decide afterwards whether you know, you're on Darren's side or Byron Berline's side. I, I'm, not taking, I'm not taking sides in this fight. <laughs> two other fiddlers I'd like to give sort of thanks and credit to. And the next two, um, I'm not sure which one of them was most influential to me. Um, I'll just call it a tie because they both made such a big difference in my life and how I think about fiddling and what fiddling sort of means to me. The first of them is a guy that came for the first time in 1971 um, from a little town in Texas called Pottsboro, a man by the name of Dick Barrett. And Dick Barrett was um, a kind of a larger than life person. He had a big personality. If you were ever in a room of people, you would know Dick was there. He just was the center of attention. He had the biggest laugh. And if you ever heard him play, you would never mistake his genius on the fiddle. He was a beautiful fiddle player, and I learned so many tunes from him. This is one of my favorites called Hell Among the Yearlings.
So the other fiddler that was also equally as big an influence on me was the iconic Benny Thomason. Um, Benny was uh, one of the kindest people you could meet. He and his wife, B were truly what you would call sweethearts. Uh, Benny was always willing to share how to play a tune, help a younger person, uh, show you how to do something. He was amazing, and he had an amazing depth of music. Um, one thing I loved about Benny is when he was in a jam session and playing something, he never left anything out. He played all the parts. It was really great. There wasn't a contest version for Benny. It was the tune, and it was always great to hear him play. This is a song I, I learned from him. Um, I love very much. It's actually a Mexican uh, mariachi band standard, and a lot of Texas fiddlers have worked it up into a tuna choice. It's in Mexico called Jesusita and Chihuahua, and in the States, we call it Jesse Polka. Those are a half dozen of the fiddlers that made a big difference in my life. I know the kids that are playing this week, the junior juniors and the small fry and the juniors, are going to have their own fiddle influences, and I hope they take the time to dig back to some of the older ones, because there's some amazing music that was played. I feel super fortunate to have been a part of Weezer from the 60s till now. Um, I look forward to many more years here. There's one last tune I'm going to play, and this is a, a thank you in a slightly different way. Um, last night was the 19th anniversary of meeting my wife, Casey, here at Weezer. And there's one small little thing that even most of my friends don't know, is that uh, the night that we met, which was Wednesday night, Weezer week, in 2004, um, I had a chance to play a tune, and this was the first tune that uh, she heard me play. And so, not only am I thankful for all the fiddling that I got here, I'm thankful that I also got the love of my life here. <laughs> this was a tune that was written in 1891. It was actually the first song that became a million seller. Uh, it was a million copies of sheet music. There weren't records back then. 
Um, it's called After the Ball. <laughs> much. Thank you, Weezer. Thank you, John.